Good morning, folks. This video, we're going to be talking about a bit of things... Uh, that didn't come out right. There are a few things that I found dumpster diving, or, well, specifically my girlfriend found dumpster diving, because right now it is May, late May, and we are in the graduation season. So a lot of the universities, especially around here, are getting out. And around here, a lot of the universities are attended by rich kids who don't know, who are just very wasteful. So, you go over there because, you know, they throw away things that most of us would like. Just, wow. Like, Xbox 360s, iPods, stuff like that. So, I went... I didn't go. My girlfriend went. I kept making that wrong distinction. I'm going to go ahead and turn on another light here. And she told me she found something that I would very much like. And when she got it back here, I was a little bit floored at what actually got thrown away. Now, this is the after pictures because I did not think to take a picture of it before I cleaned it up. But we'll zoom out and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. This is a MacBook. A regular MacBook before the thin was in and they went all crazy on it basically. This is a 2006, this is an original generation MacBook and it came to me in quite sh sorry shape. It was dirty beyond all belief. There was a ton of liquid in the up in here because uh, somebody had a cover on it and liquid managing it between the lid and the cover. Thankfully that's all I found. I pulled it all apart and couldn't find any liquid ingress of any sort, so that was very good. But it was all dirty, it was caked in dirt, it was scratched up, scuffed up, like someone basically took a giant dump on this thing and left it out to dry. So I took it in and I, I, I was kind of a little skeptical at first of if this thing would be of any use to me or anybody for that matter because it's so damn old. Let's go over the outside. As you can see, like, the minute you get it into some light, it's going to look terrible. I, basically all I did to, to get the, a lot of the dirt that was so caked on it wouldn't come off with a standard alcohol bath, is I took a Brillo pad to the outside, and Brillo is, you know, a metal pad, so it's going to scuff it with really fine scratches, but if you kind of step back and look at it, uh, you don't see any, anything wrong with it, because, I mean, it's really photogenic for what it's worth. You can't tell it had a rough life behind it if, unless you get really look close. It's a really nice machine for that. It did not show damage very well, but, except for one thing, which we'll get to in a minute. So, it looks bad if you look, hold it up to the right angle of light, but I mean, if you're looking at it from afar, it looks pretty good. On the front, not much going on here. It cleaned up well. On the side, it cleaned up well, but we also have some cracking around the MagSafe. Manly found one of these for 12 bucks in the uh, local savers, and actually that thing was in more, far worse shape than this thing ever will be. But other than that, I mean, it's good on this side besides those cracks. Bottom, okay, but I took a Brillo pad to it, so it took off everything, because it was really messy. The feet were like black, almost. The hinge, couldn't get in there, so there's some grime in there, and the hinge is cracked right here. Uh, the plastic went, uh, shield here. But other than that, looks good on the back. And on the side, again, more of the same. Looks pretty good. The only problem is the CD-ROM drive. Bit difficult to get discs in and out of. Uh, we also have a crack on the corner here, but I've actually filled that in with Gorilla Glue and wiped it away. Kind of a special trick I, I use to make cracks less uh, of a problem because it stops them from spreading any more than they already have. So, there was a big failure point, to, well, I guess failure point, it was cosmetic. <laughs> there is a big failure point to these guys, and yeah, it doesn't have a battery, so I can't, I have to kind of wedge myself in here to keep it from lifting up. But the failure point to this machine is these palm rests. They are garbage. The way Apple designed this is nothing less than absolute crap. Because if you look up here, we've got these little bits here 
they come down onto the palm rest and hold on with magnetic force. I'm not sure if these ones actually just use tension. I think these ones actually use just hinge tension to stay down. I could be wrong. No, actually that's magnets. I'm wrong. Uh, some laptops at the time time period after this did use hinge tension to stay shut rather than magnets. HP DB series, I'm looking right at you. Anyway, these come down onto this and cause it to crack because of the pressure. For as many years as this was produced, because this was produced from 2006 to 2009, they never fixed this. It was a big problem up until the last generation, which is the best generation, the 9400M series equipped models. But it's cracked as you can see here and it's even extending off to the side here my own macbook when i had one had that issue in spades so there you go that's pretty much that the keys feel interesting they have a lot of clickiness to them something i cannot say about my macbook pro and they actually are very clean they are look almost unused it's kind of shocking I want to believe that this was actually used by someone who um, was in an office. They did leave their personal documents on here, which is just a dumb, dumb move. Don't do it. I, of course, got a bit curious, went through them to see if I could peg down the actual owner of this machine. It looked like it belonged to an administrative office of some sort and then handed down to somebody who needed a MacBook. And then they just chucked it in the bin when it kicked the bucket. So yeah, that's pretty much the story of this machine as far as I can tell. What was wrong with it, you may ask? Well, the RAM was bad. Uh, I looked at it, I reseated the RAM, cleaned it off, cleaned off the contacts, reseated it, and boom, it came right to life. No problems whatsoever. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and finally boot this damn thing up. And yes, it does boot. I have already tried it. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and cut for a second and we're going to get it booted. Alright, now we're sitting in front of the MacBook. We're going to go ahead and put the power to it. This is why I keep the MagSafe situated at my desk when I for things like this. Alright. You see what we've got? we got screen. Actually, we don't even need to hold that because there's nothing on the drive. But it's gonna, not going to matter. Uh, kind of funny, also, maybe this is why this MacBook was also thrown away. I would have preferred to have gotten the one that goes with it, though. But this ended up coming with it, which is a uh, MagSafe 2. That's going to go to Ryan. I don't own a MacBook anymore. But yeah, that was with it. I wonder if that's kind of uh, whatever became of uh, the MacBook. is like someone bought a Retina and they bought this but it's still got this thing has been upgraded as we will see in a minute and I'll tell you again enter my password yep now in my opinion this thing is actually running the best version of OS 10 ever released Snow Leopard I do want to put Tiger back on it though because I want do want an older Tiger machine to screw around with but yeah, it is running Snow Leopard. I believe that's the last version of OS X it can actually run. Because everything after that was 64-bit only. Which is good, because Snow Leopard is a lot better on this machine than Leopard ever will be. Leopard was a dog of an OS. It was like literally Apple's Vista. Even though I honestly want to award that that uh, honor to our good friend uh, Yosemite. So... Go ahead, pull up System Profiler here about this Mac. More info. As you can see, we are rocking a 1.83 GHz Core 2 Duo with 2 gigs of RAM, which is about three times more than it left the factory with. Which is good, because, really, this thing is kind of crap on, an eight, on, 200, uh, on 512. I actually owned a machine. I own the later version of this that came with uh, a gig, I believe. And then I uh, had to use it with 512, and I would not wish that pain 
to anybody. So, go ahead, pull up System Profiler. And the screen is really dim to me. Like, I can barely see it. See the serial number, I really don't care because this thing will never iMessage. This thing will never do anything <laughs> anymore. Um, but yeah, we got our 1.83 Core 2. This has also been upgraded too. The, uh, the DVD, this is actually a combo, was a combo drive, but this actually can write DVDs. And I did notice when I was in here that the DVD drive had a different manufacturing date than the rest of the machine, as did the hard drive. So that means somebody's been in this machine to upgrade it. It also has a new, a better airport card because right now, if I pull up, well, you can barely see it at the top there. I am connected to my 5 gigahertz 802.11n network. Stock, these machines cannot do that. And as such, also looking inside when I was, uh, had the top off, the airport card is not original to this machine either. So someone's been in this machine to upgrade it. And it definitely shows. It's not a slow piece of junk. Um, we got Bluetooth. We've got... Got our disc ring, like I said. We can DVD write everything, pretty much. Ethernet cards, got Gigabit. Firewire, GMA950. We have our 2 gigs of RAM right there. It's 667 megahertz. Power, nothing, because... We don't have a battery in this machine, and I'm probably not going to buy one, because this machine ain't worth that much money. Um, you can see they did have some printers that need to be removed. Serial ATA. We have a hard drive. It is a Hitachi hard drive. Thank the Lord. Toshiba's are trash. Uh, about, uh, let's see here... I know it's saying it right, like, yep, 160 gigabytes, not bad, not bad at all. It's whatever. I believe this is, uh, if we go to serial ATA, 1.5 gigabit, so, an SSD ain't gonna light the world on fire in this thing. So, yeah. We're gonna go ahead, though, and back off here, because I've installed some software. Uh... You know, just go away. Installed Mozilla Firefox, and it's decently fast for basic stuff. However, YouTube just ne is never going to work on this, even if it's scaled down. Uh, we can go ahead and fire that up for right now. I'll show you that it's never going to work. It is absolutely never going to work. <laughs> While we're waiting for that, though, I did. I will mention that I actually got hit by the Draga One problem. I know I reference his channel a lot. I'm a big fan of him. His videos are absolutely hilarious. I will continue to watch him, and I will continue to reference him whenever I so please. But in his uh, recent MacBook video on installing Windows XP, he knows he couldn't get the hard drive back into it, and there was something gooey in there, and he ended up pulling out a strip of rubber. Well, <laughs> guess what came out of this one? I had the same exact issue he did, and I had to dismantle it and pull the rubber back off because, yeah, it's, no, it's meant for shock absorption, but really, this machine is so worthless at this point, like, I really don't even give a shit about it. Actually, this machine is, gonna, is almost 10 years old, if I r remember the serial number coming back correctly. Um... I believe it was manufactured this summer, and it's about to be 10 years old, <laughs> quite literally. So, I will show you that this machine is cannot do YouTube at all. I mean, it can, Hello there, everyone. but I wouldn't call it watchable. And yet again, I find myself with the house all to myself. Which means that I can leverage not only use of the kitchen, but also the kitchen table for my nefarious video making purposes. I don't know why so many folks in the viewing audience have such an affinity for video. Maybe Google Chrome would be better, but Google Chrome no longer supports this OS, so can't really do that. But to give the CD player a test, and in cases like this, it's always good to have a CD you really don't give a crap about, much less the music on it. So we're going to go ahead and throw that into our optical drive. 
and as you can see here, I don't know if you can see that, there's already a scratch on it because uh, there's something up in there. I don't know what, but it really sucks because I actually had, I actually have one of these RW discs and it put a nice ding in it when I put it in because I tried to install Tiger on this thing and it just wouldn't go. But we're going to go ahead and stick this in. We're going to go ahead and see what happens. Go ahead and tighten this down so we stop making fun noises. But it does read CDs. The CD drive does work. And we are going to launch into iTunes here. I really like. This machine may just stick around as kind of a museum piece to me. For many reasons, like this kind of... This type of machine, really, I, I, I miss Apple during these days. I really do. Because, uh, Apple... This is one of those times when Apple was, like, really, really cool. Like, they were doing some pretty interesting things. This is, like, the first... One of the first machines of the Intel transition. And it, Apple hardware was a lot more fascinating back then. Right now, it's just, it's, I will agree that Apple hardware is probably the best in the biz, still the best in the biz, but I just don't feel that attachment to it like I used to with, like, with machines like these. These machines, like, kind of really made me feel awesome about Apple, even though these were known for the random shutdown issue, which it's kind of funny because these days you don't really, you can't, I can't even make this machine overheat, which is the funny part, but we're going to go ahead with, uh, oh, uh, I forgot the, the phrase I was going to use for this, but let's, uh, test that CD player. And it works just fine. Long-time viewers of the channel will know that this is no doubt a classic song. But yeah, it works just fine. Ejects just fine. But we used a disc we did not care about because it put a nice scratch right in it as we loaded it in. But we keep that around for our test purposes anyway. So, everything works. I mean, I have not had a single problem with this machine at all. And even if I fully load it with the yes command in terminal, I cannot get this thing to go above 50 Celsius. Whereas my MacBook over sitting on the bed right now absolutely shits itself if I do the same test. Which is kind of funny that given it's like many years newer and no one, I don't think anybody complained about the temperatures of that thing when it was new. Because I remember I was in the market to buy one of those when they were new and no one complained about it so pretty much yeah that's really all there is to show off with this machine to be honest because there's really like there's nothing to it it's a macbook it's a freaking macbook and uh it just works the only thing it really needed was a nice cleanup and some fresh thermal paste which made it run a lot better i mean it's it's a pretty good little machine I mean, it's arguably very useless as a Mac because it's stuck on OS uh, OS X Snow Leopard. Can't really do much with it. But it's still a great little machine. I mean, it's a little kick-around machine. And like I was saying, these uh, polycarbonate MacBooks take a beating and don't even show it unless the damage is really severe. And for one last test, let's see if the sleep sensor works. It would appear that it does.
But again, the, the point that kind of comes to mind here is like, why do people throw this, just chuck this stuff away? Like, I for one know somebody who could use a machine like this. Like, it's not the best, it's not going to light the world on fire in performance, of course. But I mean, it's serviceable. It works for basic things. Arguably, it would be more useful as a Windows machine, because if you throw, you can throw Windows 7 onto it, even though it, some sites have said not supported. You can throw Windows 8, Windows 10 onto it. Um, the iBook guy, aka, or the 8-bit guy, as he's now known, has actually done this with one of these MacBooks. And it's still useful. I mean, it still works just fine for basic things. So, I mean, why would you just chuck it in the bin? I don't know, but maybe, hopefully, I... We can save some more technology from getting chucked in the bin like this. Because again, it's not it's not an amazing performer, but for someone who just needs a computer for basic basic work, it gets the job done, and it gets the job done just fine. So until next time, I'll see you later.